Hello everyone, I'm Lauren Kana, and today I'm going to be playing some games on Pixelborn with Ruby Amber Mufasa. I've updated the deck a little bit since last Wednesday when I showed my change. Notably, I cut one Lady Tremaine and added a Madame Medusa, and I cut the two Goofies for two Prince Eric's. This does bring the uninkable count up to 14, which is a little higher than I'm comfortable with, but it's been proven to work so far, so I'm going to go with it. If you have any comments on the decklist, please leave them down below. But for now, I'll get into the games. Alright, we're here for game one against Amethyst Steel on the draw. So the opening hand has the Rapunzel Mother Gothel combo, so that's going to be our game plan. I'm actually going to send everything else back. Okay, let's see what our opponent has. Just ink and pass, that's good because that's what we're going to be doing. I link one of these two minis and pass. What do they have on two? The Inkage of Far, so this is probably. No, this wouldn't be the pirate stick. This must be the Jafar Steel. Uh, a whole new world deck. We'll ink a Wendy. And Wendy's not great into this Jafar because Jafar can just banish it. So we will play Mother Gothel and pass. We're going to want to play one of these Bare Necessities before they can wheel. Or before they can cast a whole new world. Sorry, wheel is a magic term. They ink a Simba. And finish off my Mother Gothel. Okay. They don't quest. Peculiar. I'm going to ink this Wendy because we're beyond that part of the game. And play a dock. And pass. This does, yeah. I just don't get why they didn't quest last turn. They ink a Jafar. Are they going to shift a Jafar? Nope, play a lamp. And another lamp. They can draw a bunch of cards. I'm going to start by singing the Bare Necessities. Take a whole new world, because that's the combo with Jafar. Then I'm going to ink a Maleficent. And play a mini. And pass. If they don't play the Along Came Zeus this turn, we can take it with the Bare Necessities next turn. Are they going to shift Jafar? Yep. Then are they going to sing and along came Zeus? Or are they just going to challenge my dock? Challenging my dock means I can't Lady Tremaine next turn, which is unfortunate. But I do think I needed to sing. Okay. Oh, they took care of Mini and not Doc. That means I get to Tremaine next turn, which is really good. They're going to draw some cards, gain some lore. Yep, we'll start by questing. Get the discount on my Tremaine. Ink a Stitch. And play Lady Tremaine before this Jafar gets out of hand. And 
and I'll pass. Next turn we'll probably try the Bare Necessities again. Which is this Jafar? This Jafar looks at the top two, but it's one on the bottom, one on the top. Okay. Trinobog costs eight currently. It's a lot. I'm gonna quest for four. I'm gonna play the Spare Necessities. Take a whole new world again. That's really been coming in handy. And then I'm just gonna gonna play out this Rapunzel, even though I don't get any cards. Just threatens to quest for two. Gonna guess they'll shift Jafar? No, they play the genie first. That makes sense. That way next turn they can gain three lore when this draws some cards. Except... I'm going to get to Madame Medusa, the genie. Madame Medusa, banish the genie before it can draw three cards, and pass the turn. They can shift Jafar and challenge something. They are going to shift Jafar. Do they want to challenge something? Do they have a song to sing? Nope, just challenge my Tremaine. We're pretty far ahead here. I am going to have my... oh, this has evasive. Right. So I guess I'm just going to quest. I'm just 17. I'll ink this Maui to play the Chernabog. And pass. And they need to figure something out, otherwise we win next turn. Genie is not figuring it out. Yep. Alright, they concede. I will see you back for game two. Alright, here we are for game two against Emerald Steel. I am kind of scared of Ursula deck, so this is going to be a big test. This hand is pretty good. I'm just going to send Maleficent and Pongo back. Maybe I should have sent one of the Rapunzels. Doc and Maui, okay. They're on the play, they're inking a Cheshire Cat and playing a Bayou. Okay, so this is the Beast Relentless deck. I'm less scared of that. I'll just ink a Rapunzel and pass. Yep, there's the Beast Relentless. And a morph. So this might still be an Ursula deck. I am going to ink mini because my three drop of choice is going to be Doc. And I'm going to play Wendy. If they play a sad beast this turn, we're going to be in trouble. Which is exactly what they do. Okay, we need to find a Madame Medusa and get up to six ink quick. Alright, we can ink this Pluto. Play a dock. And sing Bare Necessities. Take... Take a whole new world. And pass. They draw two because of Beast.
If they challenge, we get to Maui next turn, which will take care of the beast, which would be helpful. But I don't know that they'll challenge, even though it is a free banish. All oh, right, I left them with a smash to smash dock, so we can't Maui next turn. They just move beast to the bayou. Okay. I am going to ink a Rapunzel to play out of Prince Eric. And I'll get on the board by questing for two. They can't, you know smash or fire the cannons at my Prince Eric because he'll just banish the beast in response. Which does leave me with a two lore character that it's very hard for them to remove. But they now have two pieces of the combo between Sheriff of Nottingham and the Bayou. Okay, interesting. The Quest of the Beast. Well, I will ink stitch, play a Maui. Now the question is, do I want to banish the sheriff for in exchange for my prince? Or do I just want to banish the beast? I think it's safest to banish the Sheriff as well. Just so they don't combo me out of nowhere next turn. Or two turns from now, it would be. And Wendy can quest. Okay, we've got the board advantage. They just have a Bayou, which Maui can banish next turn. They've got Tinkerbell, which does one to each of my characters, which isn't enough to banish either. Okay, Maui will banish the Bayou. If Wendy quests, Tinkerbell gets to challenge Wendy, or Tinkerbell gets to challenge Maui and banish Wendy, but that would banish the Tinkerbell. So I think the play is to not quest with Wendy this turn. Just play out a Prince Eric and a Pluto. And pass. Now Tinkerbell has the option of trading with Maui and Wendy or questing. At which point she'll just trade with Maui. And if we get... If she does trade with both Maui and Wendy, that gives us Chernabog next turn. And if we draw an ink and she quests, we get Chernabog next turn too. So hopefully our evildoer will be coming down soon. Uh, they have a slut the storm range on that they're singing. They play another Bayou. Move Tinkerbell there. Lady Tremaine is good. That takes me off my Chernabog, but answering the Tinkerbell for free is really nice. Because that lets me quest for four and get to some parody on the lore. Alright, we'll pass. I'm feeling pretty good about this. We have quite the board advantage. They're not playing Ruby, so they can't be prepared. They could grab your swords if they're still playing that. But nope, they just banish a damaged character. Of course, now we draw the Rapunzel, but we can quest for four and play a Chernabog, which is pretty good. That gives us just enough lore on board to 
win next turn if they can't banish one of my characters. Beast doesn't banish a character. Okay, so we'll take the win. I'll see you back for game three. Game three, playing against Steel Amber, so some variant of Steel Song. I haven't seen what they cut to put along came Zeus into the deck, but this hand is really great. I'm just going to send Maleficent back, because I like everything else here. Get a Mufasa. Now what do I ink? I guess we end up inking this Pluto. Because it's just the furthest away. And, you know, hopefully we draw three cards before then. And find more five drops. They ink a Cinderella and have nothing. Okay. Well, I'm gonna ink this second Rapunzel. I'm gonna play a Gothel. And Pluto is going to do the rare thing of questing for one because we didn't have a 3-drop. Next turn, though, he'll be able to get us into a Rapunzel to draw some cards. They ink a Hercules and play Akita. Okay, I'll ink this Wendy. I will activate Pluto to play a Rapunzel. Draw three cards. Then I'm going to sing the Bare Necessities. Take... Am I going to empty my hand first, or are they going to empty their hand first? Smash doesn't do anything to my board except kill or banish Pluto, which I think I'm fine with, so I'll just take the whole new world. And I'll pass the turn. Well, and Kita can just banish Pluto, but that's fine. Pluto got me into an early Rapunzel. And they play a Prince Bodyguard. Okay. I'm going to ink one of these Maleficents, play a Prince Eric, Mother Gothel will banish Kida, and Rapunzel will quest for two. I'm feeling pretty good about this board position. But they do have four cards, which one of them is a beast, we know. I forget what their other cards were, if I'm being totally honest didn't know about that smash. Or I did know about that smash. They can quest for two. Well, that's okay. We can ink another Maleficent, play a Mufasa, and quest for four. We're up on board. They have one more card than us, but they haven't inked yet. This prince just doesn't scare me. Beast scares me. Because Beast will give them lots of cards. But for now, all I can do is push my lore advantage. Six. We'll play a mini. And a Pluto. And I'll ink a stitch that has more than lethal on board, so they're going to have to do some trading.
Ariel to try and find a song. Ariel finds the Let the Storm Rage On, which can not do a whole lot. Can banish my Pluto. It can manage Eric, but then Eric would just banish Beast. And I have nine on board, so I need to get rid of two things. Another Ariel, so they're looking for two songs which can banish two things. Smash is not a song, though. Let the Storm Rage on. Pluto. That makes sense. Then they have to draw into something that they can sing. They have to draw and along came Zeus. So they can banish my mini. Or they can, yep, yeah, they can do that. They can trade their beast for my Eric. And that means I don't have seven on board. I only have six. But I'll take my six lore. I'll ink a Maui. And I'll play Stitch to draw some cards. That way, even if they do find a way to answer my board, I've got some gas in the tank. Can they answer four characters? Beast is not their answer. They quest for two, three, four. And this looks like a concession. Yep, we'll just quest, get up to 21, and I will see you for round four. Game four with Mufasa against Ruby Amethyst. We are 3-0 and so far. Let's see if we can make it 4-0. This hand is okay. I'm going to send Pluto and Stitch and Tremaine back. Really want a small Pluto. Two Maleficence is not what I was looking for. On the draw, this is going to be rough. Because we don't have anything until turn three. And Ruby Amethyst is good at playing things early. But not this game. No one drop. I'll draw another five. Inca Maleficent, pass the turn. The Inca Fox and play a broom. Interesting. Well, there's Pluto a turn late. I'll still play it. And I'll ink another Maleficent. And pass. So my plan is next turn to play a dock. Don't do anything with Pluto so that on turn four I can play a Mufasa. Or a six drop if I draw one. The Inca Jim Hawkins. Play some Marion Talisman. Okay. That is whenever you challenge, whenever one of your characters is banished in a challenge. All right, let's ink a stitch. Let's play a dock, and I'll pass. They play a Jolly Roger. Quest for one, Inca Fox. They have another play, and Ursula. What do you do for this character? Quest. Just an opponent can't. Just a character can't ready. Okay, that's pretty good. We drew our fourth Mufasa, so we will quest with Doc, ink a mini, and just start playing Mufasas. They play Kakamora, which loses me a lore. 
Is that a pirate? It must be a pirate, so they can give it rush. They banished my dock, but that's okay. We've got the Mufasa train coming. They sing friends and pass. I will ink this mini. I'll play another Mufasa and quest with my first Mufasa. The quest of Ursula, locking down my Mufasa. Play Mickey. So this is a broom deck. This is not what I was expecting from Ruby Amethyst, if I'm being honest. This is quite the cute combo they have. Just send brooms into my characters, get them back, draw a card of Sumerian Talisman. It's cute. Rapunzel. Let's play a Rapunzel and draw some cards. Eric and Tremaine, let's send Mufasa into Ursula. See what we flip. Gothel. I'll take it. That just turns on my Rapunzel for next turn. I'm not going to ink anything. I'm not going to do anything with Pluto. I'm just going to pass the turn. I guess their broom does get a free trade into my Gothel, which is unfortunate. We flip a Wendy, darling. They send Broom into Gothel as expected. Draw a card, get Broom back. Inca Jim Hawkins. Play a broom. This is annoying. <laughs> we need a Madame Medusa to answer this Mickey. Wendy's not the answer. I will ink Wendy. I'll quest with Rapunzel. I'll quest with Wendy. I'll play out of Prince Eric because I think he's going to be the answer to this Mickey. Broom into Rapunzel, they get Broom back, and they draw a card. If they play that Broom again, well, what does this one do? Exert a character they can't ready. So they exerted my Prince Eric, that's unfortunate. Okay, let's draw some cards. Stitch will be good next turn. Let's play the Bare Necessities. Take their friends. They have so many brooms. I think this Wendy just needs to quest. 
And I'll pass. Was this only on enter? Yes. They send their Wendy into, or their broom into my Wendy. Draw a card, get their broom back. This is annoying, but we're slowly creeping up on lore. Broom trades with Wendy, they draw a card, they get Broom back. This Prince Eric is the best thing I've got going for me, because they can't really do anything to it unless they lose their Mickey. And they can't leave anything exerted. Gonna ink that Pluto. Play out a stitch, draw some more cards. Maleficent, we're getting close to. Actually, next turn we can Maleficent. So I'm gonna quest, I'm gonna get my four in, and pass. They can quest with Ursula to lock down my Prince Eric, which I assume they'll do. And then do some more broom stuff. But next turn, unless they find a way to banish my Pluto, next turn I'm getting Maleficent. Oh, they exert their Mickey. Interesting. Is this a Be Prepared coming? Because I'll take that. They play the Rush Broom. They rush into my Rapunzel. And then Hey Hey finishes off Rapunzel. That's fine. Oh. Okay, we reconnected. They quest for one, they quest for two, and yep, my Eric stays down. But we can stitch into Mickey, Maleficent down Ursula. Yeah, so Stitch Mickey. Ink the stock. Maleficent Ursula. And now they just have some dorks that don't come back. Unless they probably have another Mickey in hand, but. We can take care of that at some point. But this Eric is a problem for them, this Maleficent is a problem for them, this Stitch is a problem for them. They can just banish Pluto, that's fine, he did his job. Yep, take the easy banish. And they draw a card, but they don't get their broom back. They keep making me lose lore. <laughs> but that stitch was a mini for one. I'm gonna banish the hey hey. Hey 
Can't make me lose another lore. And a fox. Okay, I will challenge the broom. And I'll play a Tremaine. This answers their board. Except for the Jolly Rogers and the Sumerian Talisman. But I'm feeling ahead again. We both have five cards. They have their own Prince Eric. That's pretty good. That they can give Rush to answer both of my characters. Okay. So now it's a clean board. We do have these Mufasas, which are going to wreck havoc. They play a Hey Hey. Make me lose a lore. I'm going to play Mufasa and Wendy. That way, if they both survive, I can stitch next turn. Akamora, make me lose a lore. Move Hey Hey, make me lose a lore. <laughs> it was at like 11 before. What do they have for their 5 ink? Another broom. Okay, I'm just gonna quest. Play a stitch. I guess I can start playing this Pluto. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass. If I need to get to 9 ink, I can do that. Magic Broom challenges Mufasa. What does Mufasa reveal? A dock? Sure, we'll play dock. They have 34 cards to my 29. It's been a long game. Another Rush Broom. Banishes Dock. Kakamura banishes Wendy. They make me lose a lore. They play a Broom. They shuffle some cards back in. Pluto is not that impressive. My Stitch will banish their broom. Then I'll Rapunzel. Draw some cards. I'll play this zero mana Chernabog. Or zero ink, sorry. I'll ink a Mother Gothel. And I'll play a Mufasa. Got a big board for them to deal with. I have more cards in hand. I'm up on lore. It's a close game, though. Another Rush Broom. Shuffle the rush rooms back. Uh, trade for my stitch. At least they don't have a Mickey anymore. That Mickey was just getting things out of control.
Prince Eric. Okay, what do I want to do? I want to quest with everyone. If they want to challenge, they can challenge. I want to get up to 15 lore. I can have up to 10 ink this turn. I think... I ink this many. I play Medusa and banish the Hey Hey. And I play Prince Eric. This might have left me too open to a be prepared. But, well, they would challenge Mufasa first before they'd be prepared. Pluto is not where it's at, but it's it's cardboard on the table. Okay, that doesn't strike me as someone who's looking to be prepared. If they're just gonna... I guess if they banish my Rapunzel and my Pluto, I have three, four, five, six, that's still enough. Yeah, they just need to draw cards. What does this hook do? It has rush. This character banishes another character in a challenge, ready this character. Okay, so it's just a scar. They still need to banish one more of my characters. Seven, and then the broom can go into Chernabog. Okay, so they can get through this next turn. But it costs them a lot. Okay, I'm going to quest for three. I am going to Tremaine, make them stack Kakamora. Then I'm going to hold on to this Eric in case there is a be prepared and just play Pluto. Now my readied characters alone can get me up to 20. So they have to answer both of my both of my exerted characters and one of my ready characters. Prince Eric with Rush is a good start. Yeah, they can... It's still going to be hard for them. Like, Eric has to go into Medusa, and then banish Tremaine. Oh, interesting. Last-ditch effort. So it does get to trade with Medusa. And Lady Tremaine. And draw a card. And then Ursula can trade with Prince Eric. 
Or quest and lock down Prince Eric. That makes more sense. Okay. Let's quest of this Pluto. Get up to 18. Play this Pluto. Um, just normal bodyguard. And play this Goffel. Just things that can quest. How many cards do I have left? Oh, 36, because I shuffled a bunch in with Chernabog. That makes sense. They have to banish all but one of my characters. They can leave either Pluto or Mother Gothel, but everything else has to be answered. Mickey is unfortunate, because that can just let them chain some brooms together. But Pluto bodyguarding is going to do a lot. They challenge Pluto with Ursula. Draw a card. Yeah, they must just needed a card. They ink a Jim Hawkins. They play a broom. Which is going to lock down one of my characters. Okay, so they answered the Prince Eric. And now they can rush into my Pluto. Or they can get that broom back. But they're down to one ink. I don't know what they can do with one ink. I mean, Mickey can banish Pluto, but then my small Pluto and my mother Gothel will quest for enough. And I win. Alright, I will see you back for game 5. Let's see if we can get the 5-0. Alright, round 5. Playing for the perfect 5-0 against Sapphire Steel. We're on the play. We've got the Rapunzel Gothel combo. We've got Doc. We've got Wendy. Baron of Sussex. I'm just going to send Pongo and Stitch back. For a Tremaine and another Doc. Okay. I'm going to ink one of the Docs and say go. Opponent inks a Jafar and plays a Scepter of Arendelle. I will ink a Pongo and play a Wendy. Opponent inks a Let It Go to play a Gramatala. I will ink a Maleficent. I will play a dock, and I'm going to sing Bare Necessities. Guess we'll take a let it go. And pass. And I guess they're going to send their Gramatala at my Wendy to ramp. Yep. So I might pass on the combo of Gothel or Rapunzel just to get one card this turn. Yeah, let's start with that. Finds us a mini. I'll ink this Pluto. Oh, I forgot to quest. Let's see if that comes back to bite me. They shift to Tinkerbell, as I kind of expected. They're probably going to challenge Doc. Yep. 
Oh. And that lets them finish off Wendy. So, we lost to Lord this game. Let's see if we can get to 22 before they can get to 20. Pluto is not what we're looking for. I'm gonna ink the scoffle. I'm gonna quest for two. I'm gonna play mini. And I'm not gonna play Pluto because they could just challenge Rapunzel paying Pluto. Beast, we need something inkable so we can answer the beast. That'll count. Then we can quest for two. They get to draw some cards. Another scepter. We'll play a Mufasa. I will quest for two. I'm not going to quest with Medusa because then Tinkerbell can trade for Medusa and Minnie. I guess I'll play this Pluto. That way if I draw a stitch I can play it. Sorry, that was my kitty. They play a fishbone quill. Are they going to activate it? They only have two cards left. I mean, we have zero, so that's a disadvantage, but... They're going to sing, and then along came Zeus. Guess Minnie is their best target? Nope, they go for Medusa. And they get on the board questing for one and drawing some cards. We could really use a stitch off the top. We need to get back drawing some cards. Chernobog's not bad. I'll start by trading Mufasa for Tinkerbell. See what we get off of Mufasa. Pongo. I'll take it. I'll quest for... I'm gonna quest for... Actually, if I activate Pluto, I can play Chernobog and still have two left to activate Pongo. And draw Mufasa. Okay. We've got the board presence, we've got the lore advantage, but they've got the card advantage. Let it go, my Chernabog. It's okay, I'll actually take the ink. They quest for one, they draw some more cards. We just really have to hope this board advantage holds up.
At least if Pongo were drawing one card a turn. There's the stitch I've been asking for. So I will quest... I'm gonna quest of both. I guess I should have drawn my cards first. Doc and Gothel. I will ink the Gothel and pass. We're at 13, should be 15. Again, we've got a pretty overwhelming board advantage, except not anymore. <laughs> we just have a stitch. We've got a huge lore advantage, but they've got the card advantage. As they draw two more here. Let's get a Tremaine or a Medusa or a Maleficent. Something to stop this card advantage train. Maleficent, there it is. Ink Dock. Play Maleficent. Quest for two. Pass the turn. They can along came Zeus Maleficent if they have it. This stitch is going to be harder for them to answer. Why do they need 11 ink? That's scary. 12 ink? Oh, and a whole new world. Sure. They play a Hades, banish my Maleficent, which I think they should have banished my Stitch. Just because Stitch they can't and along came Zeus. I'll start by questing. Might as well Medusa the Hades. I'll ink a Gothel, and I'm going to Pongo and draw a card. We're at 17. We should be at 19 as a reminder if I hadn't missed that Wendy quest. See, if they would have Hades my Stitch, they could have along came Zeus, Maleficent. But they have the Tinkerbell to finish it off. A Fishbone Quill. They play a Jafar. We draw a Pluto. I think one of these Plutos is actually going to be really good, because we can quest for two. Again, if I hadn't missed that Wendy quest, we would have already won. But we can bodyguard a Pluto, which will save us from Tinkerbell getting a two for one. And we can play an Eric and pass the turn. They need to answer my entire board. Pluto has an 8 willpower, which is going to be really hard for them to answer. And we won! Perfect 5-0 on the day! I'll go back to the deck list and talk about my thoughts. And here we are, back of the deck, after a perfect 5-0. I would have really loved to play against an Ursula deck, because that is one I'm most scared of, but I'm sure my time will come. 
Thinking about this deck, the only real question I have is if this Pluto is worth it. I'm really happy I went up to a third mana Medusa in exchange for a Lady Tremaine. The Prince Eric's were great. It's just this Pluto that's my question. I don't know what I'd play over it, but I'm going to think about it. Everything else felt great. The deck performed exactly how I hoped it would. Yeah, I highly recommend this list if you're going to a tournament. Maybe try and get some Ursula testing in, but other than that, this deck is just performing great. I am now post into the Inklands 12-0 with the deck, so really treating me well. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I post new videos, try to twice a week, maybe three times a week, coming soon. Thanks for watching!